Hey, I'm Eddie, a full-time videographer at Canva. Learning a new program or tool can feel daunting, but I'll make your first editing experience straightforward and enjoyable. Keep watching and we'll cover all the basics like how to trim your video and add text, music and animation. I'll even show you how you can make quick edits using Canva's mobile app. If you live, love, love this content, make sure you hit that subscribe button. We're uploading new videos weekly. To get started, let me show you how to access Canva's video editor. I'll type video into the search bar and select the blank option. There are heaps of templates to choose from, but for this project, I'm just gonna start from scratch. All right, the first thing you'll want is to upload your videos. Go here, then upload media. As soon as they appear, you can drag them into the timeline. If you don't have your own footage, you can create your video entirely from Canvas Stock Library. All of Canvas Stock videos are royalty free for individuals and businesses, so you don't need to worry about licensing. Just go to Elements, type in your subject, and select all the videos that suit. For today's tutorial, I'm going to make a short video for a yoga studio. Love that for us. Let's say it's to introduce customers to a new instructor called Kim. To trim down a clip, simply slide the edges inwards. I usually watch the video and stop the playhead right where I want to make the cut. That way I know precisely when to stop dragging. You could also use the timestamp here to help you. Now, let's say I wanna cut a section out of the video. I'll move my playhead to where I wanna make my first cut, hit the three dots and split clip. Right clicking on the mouse is another way you can bring up these options. If you're splitting a clip into multiple parts, I'd recommend adding comments like this. For example, I'll make a note bringing hands to toes here. Now I don't have to rewatch each section to tell them apart. Next up, I'll show you how to crop your footage to remove any unwanted background. This is a good way to pull your audience's focus where you want it, free of distractions. When you drag a clip into the editor, you can do it two ways. If you drag it to the edge of the screen, it will attach to the background like this. You won't be able to crop the video when it's in this state. If you drag your clip to the center of the screen, it will be in its own bounding box. You can make it bigger or smaller by using these handles and you can use crop to change what you will see within the box. If a clip is attached to the background and you don't want it to be, simply detach it by right clicking and selecting this option here. I can crop it on both sides and move it. Now I have the space to add some text or another video here. To rearrange the videos, I can simply click and drag them to where I want them. I'll reduce the size of this clip down a little and make sure it's centered using the pink lines as a guide. Now I can change the background color like this. How about we rotate this next clip? I could also flip it by heading up here. If you don't like the change you've made, you can easily undo it by clicking on this icon or pressing Ctrl Z on your keypad. Now I'll add some text to keep the audience engaged. All right, now let's add an end frame. End frames are useful for prompting action. You can use them to influence a viewer's next move. For example, you could remind someone to subscribe to your channel or invite them to sign up to your newsletter. This time I want to use a static background, so I'll click here for a blank page. I'm going to keep it simple and leave it white. I'll add a call to action and the website underneath. And I'd like to include the lotus flower icon I used earlier, so I'll head back here to copy and then paste. Now for some final touches. To introduce more movement, I can animate the text on each page. I'll start with this one, select the text, then hit animate. By hovering your cursor over the top of each animation, you can see a preview of each one. I'm currently tossing out between baseline and typewriter. I'm gonna go with typewriter for now, but let me know in the comments which one you prefer. I'll do the same for the next page.
The rotated footage is a bit unique, so I'll add a different animation this time. I'll go with the pan and make sure it's moving in the same direction as the instructor. And back to the typewriter effect for this final page. Next, I want to show you how to add music because sound plays such a huge role in holding the audience's attention. Without music, your video might seem to drag on or feel like something's missing. By adding music, the audience is more likely to stick around and be entertained by your content. The audio library can be found over here. There are hundreds of killer tracks to choose from. Loads of them are free, but the ones with crowns are for Canva Pro subscribers. You can search for music by genre or mood or click this icon to apply filters. Or you can try your luck by typing in a word that aligns with your video. Let's see what comes up for relax. To listen to a track, click the play button. Then once you've found your track, drag it over to your design or click anywhere on the title. Similar to trimming the footage, you can also edit the timing of your audio. Do this by dragging the edges or clicking adjust up at the top. You can add a fade in or out by hitting this button. For this video, I'll add a fade out so that the music softens while people are reading the end frame. Another fun trick is to time the transitions of your video with the beat of the music. This takes a little practice, but it really makes a difference whether your audience realizes it or not. If you look at the waveform, you can see when the music changes or breaks. I can adjust the length of these to match each break as long as I allow enough time for viewers to read the text and take everything in. A good rule of thumb is to read text out loud and allow that much time. Okay, I think it's ready to preview. But before I do, I'll quickly show you where to adjust the volume. I'm happy to keep this one at 100, but you may want to lower it if your original video has any audio like voiceover or sound effects. All right, show time. Are you ready? Now all that's left to do is download it. I'll go to share, then hit download. That way it'll save straight to the downloads folder on my computer. If I was making this video for my social media, I could instead upload it directly to any of my linked social accounts. We're almost done here. I've just got one more thing to show you and that's Canva's mobile app. If you didn't know already, you can also edit your videos on the go using your phone. It's perfect for when you're traveling or you're out and about and need to pull something together quickly. As you can see, it looks a bit different to the desktop editor, but it doesn't take long to get used to. All the editing tools are along the bottom here and the elements can be accessed via this plus button. What other elements could I add? Oh, I'm gonna go watch this, but good luck. I hope I've covered everything you need to make a video you're proud to share. Oh, cute. You must have enjoyed this video if you're still here. If that's the case, would you care to give it a like? That way others are more likely to see it. We've also put some videos here that you might like to watch as well. Also, I'm thinking of creating another video just like this one to show people how to make videos entirely out of animated graphics. If that's something you think you'd be keen to watch, let me know by writing part two in the comments. Comments are my love language. Anyway, bye for now. Happy editing. <laughs>